This is a video about a simple data set, a simple scatter diagram, its mean, its least squares regression line, and a way that you can illustrate the principles of least squares regression with a random line that's placed through the mean. So let's start again and uh, start with a fresh page. Just drag that down to there, and I'll just create a data set by literally going to the point mode and just throwing some points on. Not too many, because select mode, select them all, and right click, convert those to a data set. So now they're a single object, and the right click options are, for example, to put on the mean. There it goes, and you can select the mean and go to the text box, which will show the mean uh, using the notation x bar, y bar, which is nice. And you can drag that round to there. The data set itself is a single click and double click will open up the dialog box and this of course is data that could easily have been pasted straight in from Excel. So if we select the data set and right click look at the y on the x regression line, there it is. x is reckoned to be the independent variable and that is the dependent variable. So y on x is correct. If you want x on y it is available so uh, let's see if we can just establish one or two things. First of all, um, these points can't be moved around because they all belong to a single object. So if you press the control key in the middle section of the on-screen keyboard, if you press control, it stays down. And so now I can pick points up and move it around. So for example, if I move this point here by keeping the x the same, what's going to happen to the mean? Well, the x bar value will not change, but y bar will, so it's going to move up. Correct. Uh, you can show that the effect of moving a single point around is quite dramatic towards the edge, but remember this is a very small data set. But the important thing to realize here is that the least squares regression line always passes through the mean of the data. And that's very important because it means that if you're going to put on a random line, you may as well put it through the mean, and then you've only got one degree of freedom uh, to move it around. So let's do that. Um, first of all, I want to put uh, another point over here somewhere. I'm going to put the line x equals 10 in to give me something to anchor it to. So enter an equation, x equals 10. Now it's very important to realize that uh, the control is being kept down. That control is still down and still able to move the points around. So I must cancel it first and then uh, this will work properly. x equals 10. Um, I think I'll make it dashed and uh, that's fine. So that was the draw options and uh, click OK and that should draw up here. So now if I put a point on this line, there it goes, then select that point and the mean and right click do a straight line. We've now got a variable straight line. We know it goes through the mean of the data, so what we're interested in now is see if we can find the line which is indeed the least squares regression. This is the line of best fit by I and then we need to have a look at the calculations involved. So first thing I'm going to do is select the actual answer and right click hide it so it's not there. That way we've got the ability to move this around and see if we can get it right. So I'm going to start with this line and this data set and right click Y on X residuals. Now Y on X residuals um, and X on Y are both available but this one takes X as the independent variable will therefore draw vertical lines all the way down and if we have the lines option first rather than the squares I think that shows very nicely that these are the deviations of the value of y uh, from the predicted uh, line of best fit values uh, given by the selected line. Now we can move these around and you can see that they do change. So what we want to do is to try and minimize the length of these lines but some are negative and some are positive. So the best thing to do is to um, add up the squares of these lengths. So I can double click on this now and choose the squares option. That shows what, precisely what we're doing. We're adding up all these squares and if I select those squares as an object and go to the text box, there you can see we can display 
the sum of the residuals, y on x. Now it's 3.643 at the moment. Let's see if moving this up and down increases it. Yes, it does, or decreases it. Now, because we've hooked it onto this line here, we can use the up and down arrows very nicely to move it very slowly. 2.9, 2.8. And it's going up again now, down, down. So round about here somewhere, a little bit of careful thought. Now, of course, we can reveal. Right click. Um, unhide all and see how close we were and indeed we were right on top of it as expected. To tidy up the graph uh, what we might do is double click on the axes and have a look at the ranges. Now if we want uh, these to go in twos and twos let's have the pips going in twos as well and then equal aspect then I think there's one more thing to do on the axis, double click, which is to put on the appearance of one of the themes is graph paper and OK. And that's looking pretty close to what we had at the start.